leaves and there's some hail. Pretty exciting weather. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> And then see, where are you? I'm in Orono, but my gosh, my face is wide as all get out. I've never seen it this wide on screen. <laughs> Looks like I a nice believe. face. <laughs> it does, it's beautiful. So where are the others of you from? I'm from Hamden. Not from far Bangor. from. All right, great. We've got a few more people coming in. It's trying to Hi, everybody. Hi. And we'll wait one more minute. <clears throat> and we'll officially get started. <laughs> Is there any way I can make my screen not so wide? I've oh. never had it look this bad before. Um, no, it must just be a setting in your camera. I, I, I don't know for sure. Okay, I know. It, yeah, it's never looked this way before. Are you, you on gallery view or or I'm speaker? sorry? Are you on gallery or speaker view? I'm on yeah. gallery. Yeah. Okay. Well, if a lot more people come in, you'll just get smaller and smaller. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, let's get started with the little technical things. I'm not gonna mute all of you when some of you may be used to that when you join in on a Zoom meeting because you're going to be talking amongst yourselves, um, I hope. And uh, I really am thrilled that you could join us tonight for this virtual exhibit uh, opening, Hope, the Thing with Feathers. Um, and it's just been wonderful to see the pieces that all of the artists have supplied for these um, this series of um, exhibits uh, with the theme of hope. Tonight, we're going to just be a little bit casual. I have a slideshow that I've created with your work and your descriptions and things, and um, we'll go through the slideshow. And if you'd like to, I'd encourage you to read your artist statement or the piece that you wrote, the little piece that you wrote. And if any of you have any questions um, or comments or just want to chat amongst yourselves, that seemed to be what the the group from the first exhibit opening wanted to do. Um, and anybody have any questions or comments? No, you look good. <laughs> well, thank you, David. <laughs> right, well, I'm gonna share my screen with you then and start with the, the PowerPoint. I'm going to get Facebook open too, just in case somebody's watching on there. Um, All right, here we go. Whoops. Sorry about that.
it was interesting to me that two different artists that are included in this exhibit um, used uh, Emily Dickinson's poem, Hope is the Thing with Feathers as their inspiration. James B, he painted the Ship of Hope. Um, he's one of our amicus artists. They do a wonderful art program. And he says the ships symbolize hope of going to a new place. One more coming in. For, the, for those of you that just joined us, we're not muting everybody so that you can all chat amongst yourselves. We just got the slideshow started. And uh, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having us. <laughs> Mary Michael Billings. She did this photograph and um, enhanced it with the hopeful bee. And it's a photograph of a sunflower that visited it was visited by a bee in her garden. Oh, we got one more coming in. Oh, that's me twice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you for letting me know. <laughs> Abriana, I mentioned earlier that we get to your um your piece, please feel free. It's got a little echo here, sorry. Yep. Maybe in, please feel yeah. free to read your little statement yourself. Oh wait, how are we? Sorry, we have, we're having computer issues. Oh, I'm sorry. I think we are causing the echo. <laughs> Is there another one? Of, you have to turn the sound off on one of your devices. Oh, okay. Just the sound. I'll turn it off on this one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. But somehow my can't, your camera is on my video. Oh, how is that possible? Okay, I'm going to turn it back. Yes. 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 Unless you want to okay. use this one instead of that one, it's up to you. So if you just if you just want to mute until we get to you, that would be great. Okay. I know technical issues are a bummer sometimes. They really are. And they usually show up when you don't want them to. Mm -hmm. Kay Carter. <laughs> that would be me. Um, I'll read that and then talk a little bit about it. Um, I co-created this during the bleakest time of the early pandemic. I was experiencing difficulty focusing on my artwork. One day abandoning intentionality, I just began painting. To say that this piece was co-created is to say that I, I was led in its development by a spirit of hope and well-being which emerged from its core. Over a period of weeks, the painting took form, the phoenix appeared, it rose above the cauldron of chaos and fear, and blazed with life and hope. The painting is offered to all in the hope that we honor the challenges of the cauldron, are lifted with the faith of the phoenix, and know that as caring communities and individuals, we will fly again. And I had an interesting experience uh, with this uh, recently. Um, 
you can see a painting over my shoulder. And that's this painting. And I was sitting in a rocking chair over in my kitchen, looking at it. And um, I saw something that I hadn't noticed before. And that was that the phoenix is very small compared to the chaos that is below it. And yet the phoenix has that vibrant vermilion red that's, that really says to me that we will fly again. We will rise above the chaos and the fear and the other things that have happened in our communities over the past year. So um, that's my sense of hope and it sits on my kitchen wall most of the time. So. Thank you, Kay. Does anybody have any questions for Kay or any comments or anything? Feel free to talk chit chat during and then again after we'll have a little time to talk. I have to say, Kay, I love that in the cauldron, it almost looks like a heart. It's beautiful. Oh, nice work. And I didn't notice the heart, but I do now. <laughs> mm. that, that the interesting thing about the phoenix appearing is I had been working out in my studio and I came down one morning and I just went out and looked and I saw the lines of the phoenix that I had just been painting the day before. But when I went back in the morning, I just saw the lines of the phoenix rising and, and I went with it. And, uh, so <laughs> we will rise as communities and as individuals. Wonderful. Anne won't be joining us tonight. Um, and this is the piece that was sideways in the gallery that I that we had to fix the software. So um, the newest thing. There's a flurry of excitement when a new life is beginning. An unhatched egg represents continuation of the life and unlimited possibilities. And this is oil on canvas. Anne has such a lovely suggestive way of suggesting all the things around the egg and letting the egg shine with its intensity. David. Okay, am I, I unmuted myself, so I guess you can hear me. Yes, we can. Um, okay, good. So you want me to read this piece? Um, um, I'll read it. There's a little more to it. So I'll read it from what I first uh, developed. That during the pandemic, I pulled out an unresolved 2008 non-representational painting and began reworking it. Then lo and behold, it became a strange, frightened, critical care nurse in scary personal protective equipment on the right, facing ubiquitous patients caught up in a tainted fog of contaminated, contaminated water droplets on the left. So it just sort of developed during the COVID period from something started a long time ago. It's a little scary looking, I have to admit. Well, that must have been in there somewhere when it was coming out. I guess. It, it often happens with my work as I, I work um, with improvisation. I don't start with any idea normally. And so this kind of thing happens to me fairly often. And when I get done, <clears throat> 
having just been experimenting with shapes and colors and forms, <clears throat> textures, uh, often there's a message that develops. If, if a message develops that way or some kind of narrative, then I'm pleased with it and, and pleasantly surprised. But I, I don't try to force any such thing. This is Richard Capral's Hope. Hope for the earth, environment, also for political. Richard did a piece for, uh, that was shown in our um, Centennial of Women's Suffrage exhibit that was um, quite powerful. Kevin C., another one of our amicus artists. Springtime by the lake. Springtime by the lake, life springs forth with hope of a new season. Fabriana. Hi. Um, I created this piece um, using wool from a technique that my neighbor and friend taught me um, just probably last year. And I haven't, uh, haven't stopped hooking since. <laughs> and this is a piece that her husband painted um, of Scudic Mountain that it was one of the first ones I hooked and I, uh, I really enjoy doing some of his paintings. They're, they're very uh, easy to hook, I should say. <laughs> it's beautiful. I still have a couple of punched rugs that my grandmother made for me and she had hooked rugs and things that she had done too. Uh, yes, yeah, there's so much fun to make. <laughs> I love the colors. Uh, I know they're beautiful. <laughs> uh, my favorite is hooking skies. I, I love that. And um, mm. some of uh, Philip Barter's skies are quite inspirational. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Stephanie Leonard, this is one, uh, the thing yeah. with feathers. My favorite let me, Dick, Emily Dickinson poem is Hope is the Thing with Feathers, the perfect description of the feeling. Making poems with the limitations of formed object were, were uh, excuse me, formed objects, word cubes from a game in this case uh, is something I enjoy. Once the perfect box appears, it all falls together. I wish I could see all of these in real in real life. They're they're wonderful photographs, but it, it would be so fun to really see this exhibit. It would be. <laughs> Judy. Um, so this piece is called called Hope is a Waking Dream, which is a quote by Aristotle. Um, I'll just read what it says and I'll speak a little bit more about it. Um, this piece was inspired and dedicated to all of the brave warriors of breast cancer. It depicts the scar that often left both, mo this often left both emotionally and physically by this terrible disease that is often transformed into healing and beauty and the resilience of the ones who continue to battle, uh, fight the battle. And it actually was inspired by my friend, Cynthia. Um, she and I have been friends for years since our kids were in kindergarten and our kids are in high school now. And um, she contacted me, she's moved, she's out of the state now. She contacted me during COVID and explained that she had been um, diagnosed with breast cancer and she was fighting a battle with it. But the one thing that sort of stood out to me was how hopeful she was for the whole thing. Even though it was an aggressive form, she said it's very treatable. They've caught it early. All she could think of and say was the hopeful things about it. 
And so um, I created this painting, obviously with the pink for the breast cancer symbol, but obviously, um, you know, it's an abstract, but it's supposed to detect, uh, depict some of the islands in Maine. If you look at them off the shore, you can see the little trees coming up and it was for her. So I'm gonna send this one to her eventually, um, a print of it because she inspired it and she doesn't live in Maine anymore. So hopefully it'll make her think of Maine and the coast, so. An absolutely still evening on the water. That's exactly how the reflection will be. Nice. <laughs> oh, this was Mary Ann. Um, this is a quilted wall hanging illustrating Emily Dickinson's poem, Hope is the Thing with Feathers incorporating my eco-dyed fabric and indigo shibori scraps. I use vintage lace made by my grandmother. The text is hand stamped and the quilt is hand and machine quilted. Um, and it really is not a, a color palette that I often work with, um, but I had dyed all this fabric with local uh, plants from where I used to live on Cape Cod. And a um, couple years ago, I treated myself to a week at Linger Longer by the Sea, which is a cottage colony that I used to work at. And in the shoulder seasons, the people that worked there could stay for much less than usual uh, price. And um, I had brought something else to work with, but I had this in my bag. And the entire week that I was there, the view out the window was those colors. Mm -hmm. So it was, you know, that it's um, Brewster on Cape Cod. It's mud flats that go for miles and the windows wrap around the cottage. So that's what ended up showing up from that stay. Marianne, I, I'm interested that you included your uh, grandmother's uh, lace because I recently did a oil painting. I had found a box of my great grandmother's lace, the collars and the cuffs and, and a, a uh, baptismal thing. And I used that with um, uh, molding paste I put it down on the panel and put molding paste over it and then lifted it off. And the lace texture ended up on the panel. And then I just let the lace and my feelings of relationship with the elders, etc., to guide my painting there. So very, very nice. Yeah. I, I just have done a series. Um, my grandmother, um, made my mother a grandmother's flower garden quilt and the fabric was all from the 30s and it had been stored in the attic and rotted and I was able to cut five panels out of it and save them and so I've appliqued on top of that and they're all like uh, scenes looking out a window but it's her it's her quilt is the background so we're in a we're in a similar thing, I guess. <laughs> I'm uh, later this month going to hang a show at the uh, Soane's Gallery at the Rock and Art, and and uh, that painting will be in it. So if you're in Bangor, uh, the the show will be up from the 25th of May to the 10th of July. Uh, so. We'll have to come to Bangor. I've never actually been there. Yeah. But this is the year. <laughs> you said the rock and art shop? Yes, the rock and art shop has one wall that they call the Z Sones Gallery. And um, they you can hang, you know, work with them and hang a whole series of paintings. Cool. Hmm. I'll have to check that out. Yeah. The, the, I won't talk more about it, but the, the theme <laughs> that I, I painted this winter was water and rocks and water in, as ice, water as raindrops, water as stillness, water as power, and, you know, all of 
points in between, and that's what the show will be. Sounds great. This is Deb Parker's photograph, and she titled it Hope. While in New York over the holidays, I came across this at the entrance to the subway near Central Park. New Yorkers have been resilient for the past 10 months. I photographed many messages of hope while there. This one I used for the cover of my 2021 calendar. She got great texture on that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Margaret Shalou, Roadside Flowers and Roses. <clears throat> this painting of a Maine summer bouquet includes the often overlooked and now rarely picked wild roadside flowers. Juxtaposed with the cultivated roses, it shows the birth of nature and the creativity of the human spirit. This is acrylic with mixed media. Sabra is another one of our amicus artists, and this one's titled The Blue Tree. A blue tree symbolizes hope by shining through the purple background. Hope come for the background of many of life's experiences. This is Esther Taylor's, and she had written a poem and used that as her statement. Emily Dickinson said, hope is the thing with feathers. Every episode, act, or incident is imbued with this fragile feathered net strong enough to catch the wayward storms will end, conflicts will ebb. The sun will rise and reveal a path. Hope is a transfusion, a life ring, a rescuer. Then we go on to gather up our skirts to finish the story, wipe away tears, give a hand. Hope will bind us together, its laces as sturdy as kindness. And Sherry Walton's Hope's Disguise. And see? Uh, this is a uh, watercolor that I painted for my daughter because <clears throat> she unfortunately lost this cat uh, this past year. Uh, the cat was one of the triple <coughs> Brady cats, uh, scared of everything. However, when my daughter or, or her husband called this cat, it would come running. And for once, it would put its head in the air and tail in the air. And therefore, it was hopeful that it would be greeted with a nice warm hug and not something scary. Mm -hmm. um, you talked about use some other other artists talked about using uh, items from the past. I used my mother's watercolors to paint this, and of course, it's painted for my daughter. Nice, nice, <clears throat> very nice. It's not abstract, <laughs> but it's intended. <laughs> A lot of intention. <laughs> I know. I love the, the determination that's just like all over the cat's expression and the movement in the feet. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the end of the slideshow. Does anybody have any other questions or comments or things you want to talk about or ask any of the other artists? Well, I want to questions? thank you for putting this on for us. It's uh, been a pleasure.
Thank you for the um, whole thing. Thank you. Definitely. All your efforts. And, uh, yeah. It's a pleasure to be part of it. Well, I love the software. It just it just makes all the pieces just shine, and it's very easy to work with. And I'm just very fortunate to been able to find it, and um, and uh, we got a grant supported to to keep it going through the fall. And uh, it's just a wonderful way to be able to continue with our community artist uh, exhibit project that we have annually here. Mm. So I really appreciate it. I, I really appreciated how everybody saw and expressed hope in different ways. Mm -hmm. uh, mm. And I love the uh, is it a hook rug behind you, Adriana? No, nope, that's actually one of uh, Phil Barter's paintings, but it would make a wonderful hook rug. <laughs> oh, it would. Yes. Yeah. yeah, that's neat. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, if you guys don't have any more questions, um, I just uh, let you know that um, the final exhibit will be up in July and August, and the opening is set for the uh, July 6th at six o'clock again, so Tuesday evening. Um, and then of course, we have no idea what the fall will bring, but we're all very hopeful that we'll be doing more things in person. And um, the art committee and I will be meeting um, after the summer's over. Um, and, with uh, Ben Treat, our director's direction as to how to move forward for 2022. We do have a uh, Smithsonian and American Library Association traveling exhibit coming in for December and January uh, based on the Holocaust. So we're very um, pleased to have that coming to the area and you can watch for announcements about that. And uh, again, thank you all so much. I loved seeing the variety of work and technique and um, the, the different uh, paint and photography and the, everything that was included. It was just, just been wonderful. Well, thanks for putting it together. Yeah. <laughs> Keep up the good thank work. Thank you so Andy. much. All right. Thank all of us. Well, you're more than welcome, and um, I look forward to working with you all again soon, and uh, I'm sure we'll be in touch. Um, how long will this be up on the website? Um, this exhibit runs May and June, so each, each sec, sec, we had three, a series of three exhibits, and each one will run two months. Okay, thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Anything else? All right, well, I will say good night then and thank you for coming. And like I said, I'm sure we'll be in touch again soon. Great, thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye. Bye.